The future of the world depends on the health of the family. Especially in Africa, the family is the pillar on which the structure of society rests. This pillar is strained today by class differences and social contrasts, by extreme poverty, predatory economics and political instability. These factors result from wars, disease, high levels of mortality, especially among women and children. Industrialized nations enrich themselves at the expense of this continent and, often under false pretenses of liberalization and health care, manipulate and devastate this basic and most precious structure, the family. When we look at the everyday life of an African family, we see the search for food, or for a few cents or so, that they and their children can survive. If you find someone living on one dollar per day, it is a pity because we know that back in the developed world, no one can live on one dollar per day. So. These, this is the situation in which Africans, majority of Africans, find themselves. And the only way to make life meaningful is to ensure that we work seriously at reducing poverty. When we speak about the poverty in Africa, we have to take into consideration several factors. For sure, it is not the problem of overpopulation. There is a lot of free space here. I would even say that the population is not big enough. The problem which exists, really, is rather a lack of education. There are few intellectuals in Africa, and if they speak their minds, you should see how they are treated. Their knowledge is ignored. So when we speak about the poverty and look for the root causes, we should not limit ourselves only to overpopulation. There are millions of dollars spent for production of pills, millions of dollars used to produce condom. And here the people here are dying of poverty, dying of simple malaria that you can just take a 20 naira chloroquine and you are off it. It's not up to the costs of one condom to treat malaria in Africa. But where is the drug? Where are the funds for even people? The numerous wars have caused the disappearance of proper families, and the few families that have survived have been subdued by a negative influence. The family does not play its role anymore. We see children who don't live with their parents. We can see parents who, as a matter of fact, are members of the family, but they do not fulfill their role as parents. We see children of the streets. We see children who watch the violence and abuse that their parents receive. The family as we know it has disappeared. La famille comme telle est en train de disparaître. Après la guerre aussi, il y a une réalité, les familles maintenant se composent the reality after a war is that families do not consist only of marriages and children. There are families of widows, 
There are so many widows that we have recently established commissions offering pastoral ministry among widows. The diocese helps them to find funds from charity organizations. Not so long ago, some friends from Germany gave them the first heads of cattle to fill their barns. There is also a group running a chain of tailoring shops, a handyman's workshop, so they don't feel isolated, but support the family and help with financial problems. Some of us have lost our men because of natural causes, whilst others lost their husbands during the 1994 war. We have daughter, mothers who never got married. These are women touched by fate, who live in their parents' homes. We also have women whose husbands are imprisoned. I, for example, adopted a child, whom I breastfed myself. I don't know the child's family or its parents. The child is presently a third-year primary school student. Our life is difficult because we have everything ourselves and educating our children has become very expensive, whilst our association no longer receives any state aid. We have managed to mobilize a group of women volunteers who presently look after women AIDS victims in our group. We have a group of special volunteers dedicated to looking after these orphans. Do you have parents? No. Who do you live with? With my grandmother. Do you love her? Mm, yes. Do you want anything? What would you like? What I would like is a writing set. When I go to school, I have nothing. Who do you want to be? My country's president. What makes you happy in life? What would you like? I would like very much to study, learn a lot, and love God. I think that the phenomenon of war has changed various things. There are a great many children on the streets, that is, children whose parents allowed them to be born but abandoned them for the entire day when they tried to find work, to save some money and make their living. Or, it also happens, that parents have abandoned their children in the streets and they stay there raising each other. Abandoning children leads to increasing sexual promiscuity and rapes, extremely violent rapes. We have a population here which has found itself in a situation of being abandoned and badly damaged. I think that one of the church's roles, and what we want to do, is to find a means to get the children off the streets. Trouver des moyens pour sortir ces enfants de la rue. Our project is helping orphans. After the genocide, we mothers, especially Catholic mothers, felt deeply that we should not only count on our families, but we should also look further at the orphans who are so numerous. Children orphaned because of genocide, AIDS and other diseases. We have set up an association. Thanks to it, if we had an orphan in our family, we are also able to support the child and children in other families. The first problem these women have is getting money and helping their children grow to the age when they will be able to support themselves. Therefore, these women, aided by humanitarian organizations, try to raise children. Otherwise, the children from these families will usually become what we call children of the streets.
We take care of 140 orphans here. They are open to us, even when a problem occurs. They come and tell us, here is a problem. Even if they behave badly at school, we need to go there and help them out, like a mum who is always ready to go and be on the side of her children. These days, there are so many things that are against the family. The wind is too much. And the wind that comes from Europe and America, they touch our people too much. The African continent is at the heart of a fierce battle for the family. A model promoting a revolution in sexual behavior has been applied without any regard for the tragic consequences that it brings and that developed countries themselves continue to bear. Family ties between husband and wife, parents and their children are broken. A new mentality takes over among women, men and young people exploited by international organizations instilling a culture of death through the promotion of contraceptives, abortion and free love with no responsibility, all in the name of a supposed concern for population control or the rights of women. A very aggressive population growth control policy has been in force in developing countries from the 1960s and 1970s. It is about changing people's mentality. I believe that these ideas are the true fruit of the cultural revolution in the West, at the same time being the West's apostasy. It simply fits into a certain logic of the Western cultural revolution, loss of faith, and then people believe that they are doing good. They believe that contraception and abortion are the blessings of civilization. They want to change Africans into Western-like citizens who live according to a layman's mentality. This is the process of a global secularization. So we are thrown into a void where cultural mutations, everything that was acquired, destroys society. First of all, it destroys the family with everything that is popularized among the young, that is freedom, the right to do anything. They stop listening to anyone, even their parents. If we reach for the book of Genesis, we will see that the three conditions which render humans susceptible to sin are power, knowledge, and pleasure without God. These three tendencies are the root of global political norms imposed on countries. You will be as gods, the liberalization of women and children. A wife does not need her husband. A child does not need its parents. Procreation, health, and gender are intensely focused on knowledge. You have to know your sexuality. There is no secret anymore. Everything becomes an object of science. Finally, the quest for pleasure, looking for pleasure with no God, at any price, this is the mystery of evil. <laughs>